ran over because we're stiff neck, hard headed people. We came together our people. We came together the Lord Shoot on the house of Israel. Calm down and listen to one another. And more importantly, listen to this fight. Okay. Deuteronomy 28 verse 46 And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Understand this. The officers prior to me were bringing out a lot of understanding according to the scriptures. Okay? They're telling you, Israel, all you so-called Negroes, Hispanic and Native American descent, who you are according to the scriptures. Right. The reason this, this Bible is here in this world is so that you find your way back home. That's right. It's not in these churches. Look at our neighborhoods. You got a church on every other block. What has changed? Read it again. Deuteronomy 28 verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Forever. That means until everlasting. Give me. Give me uh, the sign. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. Okay, everybody's here running into Northeast Market. What are you going in there for? On the Sabbath day. To satisfy your fleshly urges. To buy some food, to get some drink. But the people that are selling this stuff to you on the Sabbath, they're not your people. They don't own that. The clothes you have on your back are made by other nations. Yeah, we put our labels on it, but we got to go to them to get it. Read it again. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. You're serving your enemy. Let me ask you something. If somebody kicked in your door and took your goods, will you turn around and go to their house to buy them back? Which the Lord shall send against thee. God did this to us. Why'd he do it? Everybody say they believe in God. I love God. Okay? But yet you don't do what God says. Give me the love of God and then we come back to this. All, most of us out here walking by the prophets when they're trying to hand you a piece of paper with your salvation on it. We pass it up. We push our nose up. Y'all got to understand the reason we out here is to give you warning. Because you're going to burn. Read. First John chapter 5 verse 3. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. Keep his commandments. That's keeping the law. A law that was taken away from us. Every prophet that came up here has made it simple and clear that this book was taken from us. This is our book. Our forefathers wrote this book through the inspiration of the Most High. And y'all act like you know something. Give me knowledge. Y'all don't know nothing. But you're quick to do evil. You think because you know how to do a, a scam, go out and cheat somebody out of something that you arrived, that you got something. You all end up in the prison houses. Everybody out here, every man up here with fringes on, pretty much has came from the world that you're living in right now. The difference is we listen to the Most High Spirit. Read that. Y'all got to understand something. The Most High loves us. He loves us all. 
And he's trying to bring you back. All these men out here got other things that they could be doing. But they fear the most high. Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. And they should seek the law at his mouth. For the priest's lips should give you knowledge. You should get knowledge. Every man that came up here. Every one of these brothers that are walking around with flyers. Trying to share with you. Is bringing the most high's knowledge to you. Read. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. And they should seek the law at his mouth. For he is a messenger of the Lord of hosts. A messenger of the Lord of hosts. We are messengers of the most high God. Y'all are going to go to that building they call a church tomorrow. After you finish breaking the, breaking the Sabbath today. Breaking the commandments today. And you will sit there and you will listen to those guys that will sit there and take the money out of your pocket. Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. The priest's lips should keep knowledge and they should seek the law at his mouth. For he is a messenger of the Lord of hosts. That's who we are. We are messengers of the Most High God. Give me a... a, a Isaiah 34 and, and 16. Because all of you go to church on Sunday, but you don't pick up the you don't open the book. You're being you're being counseled today by men that read the book. Read that. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord. It says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord. And what should happen when you seek out of the book of the Lord? And read. You read it, read it. Understand, when we were brought over here on cargo slave ships, they made it a law that we could not read or write, be taught. If they caught you reading a book, they beat the crap out of you. If they caught you reading this Bible, if they caught you reading this Bible, they will kill you. Why is that? Why is that? Most of us have heard of the Willie Lynch letter. He gives you the formula right there. My brothers brought out that we were in slavery, but we're still in slavery. Not physical slavery anymore, but mental slavery, which is worse than physical slavery. Physical slavery, our, our bodies can heal. We're out here trying to heal your minds now. We're gonna bring something out to y'all. That this Bible, as the first thing I brought up here, that the Bible is a sign. It's a sign uh, with the Most High giving us breadcrumbs to find our way back home. Read it. Deuteronomy chapter 20, 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Brothers and sisters, we out here for you. No other purpose. We should have a crowd of people around us right now. I see young brothers and sisters going into the Northeast Market. We should have a crowd of our, our people around us getting this understanding. Three. Verse 16. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. We're cursed in the city right now. Look at where we live at. This is Northeast Market, okay? Brother brought out when he first came up here, if this was Wedman's, there'd be no paper on the ground. Actually, the food that you're buying inside Northeast Market is defiled. When they produce this food, they put numbers on it. They tell these people what what areas to send this particular food to. All right, the food that is in Wetlands is of a better quality than what you're getting in there. But you think you're getting something of value? They're killing you. Read. Read it again. Verse 16. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. You're cursed in the city. As, as another brother brought, brought up, we got an educational system, the public school system, which is a push along system. We don't learn anything. They just keep you going through and keep you dumb and stupid. We need to learn who we are. 
the only education, the only knowledge that we should be seeking is the knowledge of this book. The most I talks about, we have people that have education, but they don't even consider who they are. Understand something, when we count off those cargo slave ships, the first place they put us were in the fields. We worked from sun up to sundown on a pint of water. Nothing's changed. They send you, you go to work every every Monday or Sunday or whenever you go to work and they pay you just enough to bring you back the next week or the next two weeks. They pay you on Saturday or Friday so that you break the commandments of the Most High on Saturday. Because the first thing you want to do, that money is burning your pockets if you want to get out and buy something. Through marketing, you want everything that everybody else has. They put a covetous spirit on all of our people. Read. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel does not know. My people do not consider. We just brought out as a sign, Israel, the scriptures are telling us who we are. As Israel, we're like the ox and the ass. Strong animals, but no understanding. Read it again. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 3. The ox knoweth its owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel does not know. Our people don't know who they are. And that's what we're trying to make you aware of. Brothers, over there in the black, in the black uh, shirt, in the blue, my man, right here, with the cup in his hand. Yo, bro, bro, I'm out here for you. You see what I'm talking about? You see how our people are? You see how they, they walk around, they turn their head up? Give me the scripture, what's going to happen when you turn? No, hey, bro, Most High and Grace, how you doing, bro? What's your question? No, I'm just here to edify, Okay. You want to know who you are, according to the scriptures? Well, right now, that's the start. That means you picked up a breadcrumb. You're coming home. You see your, you see the sign right here? These are the 12 tribes. Do you see where you are? On the, on the right or the left is what society calls us. On this side, my right is what God calls us, okay? You don't see anybody else on this side but the children of Israel. Where do you fall at? What's your tribe? Judah. You know who Judah, who else is from Judah? Give me, give me, give me uh, Jesus Christ is from the tribe of uh, he, uh, Judah. Okay. You believe in Christ? Okay. Read that. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 14. For it is evident that the Lord sprang out of Judah, of which Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. So, Judah is now the head tribe. Why? We don't have a temple anymore. Our temple was destroyed in 70 AD. That's a little simple thing that our people can go to the history books and archaeology and learn. Okay, if you do that, you'll find out who you are. Okay, it tells you that when the priesthood was destroyed, Christ came to become the perfect sacrifice. All right, read it again. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 14. For it is evident that the Lord sprang out of Judah. Why is it evident that the Most High sprang out of Judah? It's evident because we are the children of the Most High. Give me, uh, give me, uh, I'm going to share something with you because God says we have enemies, okay? I'm going to demonstrate through the scriptures why we have enemies and who those enemies are, okay? Read. Psalms chapter 83 verse 2. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they make, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Our enemies are those that don't care for us. They have, uh, they, they make counsel against us. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, let us make a tumult. 
Come, let us. Sorry, I'm gonna start over. They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Cut them off. This is a particular nation of people that the, all the nations, all the other nations are cutting off. That the name of Israel. The name of who? Israel. Say it again. Israel. Brother, you're Israel. We're Israel. Read. May be no more in remembrance. Let me ask you something. Before we came out here today, did you know the Israelites? No. Bring it up. Okay. Do they teach you of the Israelites when you go to church on Sunday? Read. For they have consulted together with consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom. And Edom is your so-called white man. I'm going to give clarity on all these. Read. And the Ishmaelites. Ishmaelites are your so-called Arabs. Of Moab. Moab, your Chinese. I'm going to tell you. Two of those, all all three of those, own Northeast Market. All right, read. And the Hagarines. The Hagarines, Africans. The Ball. The Ball, Africans. Ammon. Ammon. That's the Chinese. No, that's the Japanese. Ammon is the Japanese, read. And Amalek. Amalek is your so-called Jewish man that stole our identity. That was the first case of stolen identity. He stole our heritage. Let me let me share something else with you, right? You got something over there? All right, give me the description of Christ. Because we gotta understand something. When you go to church and you are brought up from a little bit little boy, what image of Christ did they give you? What did he look like? You're pointing at this right here where it says the image of the beast. And this is the image that all of us were brought up under, that this was Jesus Christ. All right? But let's get the real definition, the real understanding of who Jesus Christ is and what he looked like. Because he represents his people. Read. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show his servants things which must shortly come to pass. So his sure servants, which are us, that keep the laws of the Most High, the things that will come to pass. This is a future prophecy, read. Verse 14, his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. Okay, now let's digest that. The hair of his head was like wool. That's like sheep. Okay? The only people on the planet that have woolly hair are us. Okay? Why don't your so-called pastors teach that in the, bio, in, in, the, in the churches? Why are they contradicting and got an image of a Caucasian hanging up there and got all of us, our people, bowing to this guy, afraid of this guy, well, he ain't got no power. He ain't got no power. The black man has power. Read it again. <clears throat> and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burn in a furnace. Jesus Christ was the dark-skinned brother that died a black man's death. Right. Because of what they did to Jesus Christ to take him out was cruel, vicious. Okay? They ain't going to do that to themselves. They only do it to someone that they hate. We're going to show you where they came from and where we are. Give me generation uh, Genesis 25, 25. All right, brother. Hey, you got a flyer? Make sure you read that. We're going to take you back to the history of where we all come from, where we generate from as a people, and where the so-called white man comes from, too. He is our brother. Read that. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 25, verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. For all you that aren't familiar with the Bible, Isaac was the son of Abraham. Read. Because she was burned, and the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. So Rebekah, just like Isaac's mother, Sarah, who could not have children, she was barren, and she had uh, Abraham lay with her handmaiden, and they had uh, Ishmael, uh, uh, you know, we now 
Well, say it again. This is my thought. Isaac. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was burned. And the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And Rebecca had a baby. Go ahead. And the children struggled together within her. So Rebecca had twins. She had more than one. Read. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. She was having a rough pregnancy. It was hard on her. Read. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. The Most High made it very clear. Two completely different nations of people. Two different types of individuals will come from her loins. Read. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. We, as a people, a nation of people, we are stronger. That's why we conquer, uh, that's why we lead in all physical feats, uh, sports. Uh, we're not only physically strong, but we're mentally strong too. We develop and create a lot of things. Even in captivity, we're still doing that. Read. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. The one people shall be stronger than the other. Hey, sis, my man, is that a woman? Yo, sisters, getting out of the white car. Yo. And the elder shall serve the younger. The oldest shall become a servant to the younger. Read. And when her days were to be delivered, were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. All right, there are twins in a room. So now to determine who was the oldest, we got to see who came out first. If it was only a second, that's the oldest, read. And the first came out red and hairy. The first came out red all over like a hairy garment. So the first one came out red and hairy like a hairy garment. It's describing a, a, a according as we all know, give me that uh, sign over there on Esau. Somebody hand me that sign, hold that sign up for Esau. Because this here is going to tell you the order of things. This here, my people, is how God brought everything into order right here. The oldest was the so-called Edomites, which is Esau, read. And the first came out red, all over like a hairy garment, and they call his name Esau. But today we call him the so-called white man. You call him the white man. Well, he's not even white. When you look at the border of this, this board that's up here, that's white. You've never seen anyone walking around looking that way. They have a pink tinge to themselves, read. And after that, his brother came out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. So Jacob was the second. Jacob came out, they did not even describe Jacob. There's a reason for that. The reason they describe Esau is because no one had ever seen anything like Esau before. And from the beginning of the world, the Most High said he created man in his image. Let's see what man looked like when God created him. Read. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Dust. Dust is dirt. All right, read and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul so everybody on the planet had melanin were of color hey sis my sister i got something in the gray in the gray sweater i'm glad you took a flyer please read it because it's about you sis it's about us as a people who we are coming back to our heritage give me some uh, uh because you got to understand, we do have a heritage. Our heritage is this Bible. But because we didn't keep the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God, it's just like you, all of us have parents. Our parents, if they tell us to do something and we go the opposite way, they, they chastise us. They punish us. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue 
from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine in anger. Okay, Jeremiah was one of our greatest prophets. He was in touch with the Most High. All right, Jeremiah kept the commandments. We as a people aren't doing that. So the Most High God, when he when we didn't do that, he put all of us in captivity. The Christian church wants to say, and most Christians want to say, I got a relationship, a special relationship with the Most High. The Most High don't deal with individuals, except as a part of the nation. Brothers and sisters, uh, uh, talking to officer, come over here with your questions. So we can answer it right here. Just step up. All your answers will come out of the Bible. I know you got questions. Because we should all have questions. They told us 400 years ago we came here on slave ships. So, so they know the Israelites. Yeah. So they know that they know about the tools around 20 right now. They need to be able to a little bit more or we don't say things that we need to do to get out of our condition. Okay. Give me crazy asses for over 13. We're going to bring that out to you. What's your name, sis? Keisha. I'm Mordecai. What's your name, bro? Chris? Oh, praise Sis? Shane? Sis? Talisha. We're going to bring out the scriptures on what was required of us. Read. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Okay, conclusion means what? I'm going to ask you to help me out here because I ain't got much of an education. What does the word conclusion mean? Huh? The end. The end, right? So after everything else is done, that's the, that's the end, right? Read. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. God says, this book says, fear God. In order to fear God, we have to keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. So that's what our responsibility is. Once you know that you are an Israelite, that you are one of the sons and daughters of, the, of Isaac, that you fall under one of these tribes, your objective, your objective then is to learn the laws. Okay, give me, uh, uh, there's some of these laws are going to be hard on us, especially brothers and sisters that are, uh, are brought up in this society. Give me 22 and 5. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Can you tell me what that means? Oh, it don't matter. This ain't no contest, sis. Okay, it ain't no contest. But what I want you to do is describe to me in today's society, what's that talking about? Sister asked me if I'm referring to homosexuality. What I'm referring to, read it again, then I'm going to give you the answer. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Okay, I, before I give you the answer, I got one question to ask all four of you. Do you believe in God? Okay. What it's describing is cross-dressing. Okay, because God gave instructions to his people that differentiates a man from a woman. Okay, and to give you that order, he tells us how we're supposed to conduct ourselves amongst each other. Okay? So if you believe in the Most High God, uh, can you step? I want you to see what he's reading from. Show her this book. Show her what you're reading. You see what he's got? It says the Holy Bible. Okay? Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So all these brothers you see out here with the fringes and ribbon of blue, we submit to Christ. That's right. That's our head. What he says, we do. 
because we want to be friends with the Most High. We want to be friends with Christ. All right. And the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. Read. And the head of Christ is God. So, God, Christ has a head too. That's the most high God. All right? And one of the things, we bring out a lot of stuff out here. But we got to let you know, not only what you already know, that Christ was a man of color, so is the most high God. And it's in the scriptures. But nobody reads it. They don't teach that in these daggone churches. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, these are how our men repented at heart, the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.